Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanago's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Alleluia. This week we have been talking about God manifesting himself either with a seal of a promise or coming in a very real way to deliver the word of God to his people or a specific person. On Monday we talked about what we rightfully call an Old Testament sacrament, not the same as a New Testament sacrament, which actually delivers grace, but a physical thing that seals. It's a symbol that seals the promise. And so God put a rainbow in the sky and said, Noah, look at the rainbow. I will look at the rainbow and I will remember my promise never to flood the earth. And so when we look at a rainbow, we see God's promise. It's a seal of that promise. On Tuesday, we talked about the burning bush and where God manifested himself as he called Moses, the reluctant leader, to carry out his plan of salvation of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. It was a gritty scene for a gritty job. And we reminded ourselves that this is how God operates still with us today. He comes in a gritty way to give us gritty jobs. He came in a very real way to save us in the flesh, on the cross, and at the empty tomb, and he calls us into gritty vocations, and he can, continues to come to us in the ministry of the church. Today we jump back to Genesis, and we talk about another thing that has been dubbed an Old Testament sacrament, and that is circumcision. God had promised a savior from Genesis 3.15. It would go through the line of certain people, through Noah, through Shem. And now we have gotten to Abram, who is now going to be called Abraham, who is going to be the father of this great nation, the Israelites. They're going to have a family. They're going to have a land. And from that family and land would come the savior. Abraham would now be the spiritual father of all who believe in Christ, that is, all who are justified by the actions of Christ through faith. And God said, I want you to mark your people, specifically the males, but really all of the people by extension, as my people. And he did that with a surgery called circumcision. Reading from Genesis 17, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram, your name will be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. 
whether born in your household or brought with money, they must be circumcised. My covenant is in your flesh to be an everlasting covenant. So here again, we see God's promised word. He over and over again, like he did with the story of Noah, when he said, I will remember, I will remember, remember, remember. So he says, covenant, 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 covenant. Every sentence has the word covenant, at least once in it, it seems, in this opening uh, of chapter of chapter 17 of Genesis. So once again, God promises a savior. Once again, God seals the promise with something physical. This time, not a rainbow, but very gritty, a very intimate surgery with circumcision. These people were to be physically marked. They were branded. They were tattooed, if you will. They were given this sign that they would see every day, at least the males would, and that that it symbolized that from their seed, right, that part of the body, from their seed would come the Savior. But they were also marked in a little different way. Much like God said to Noah, here is the sign. So he says, here is the sign to Abraham. And much like he said to Moses, I'm going to free your people. So Abraham marked these people, the Hebrews, as free people. They would go through 400 years of slavery. But even in the New Testament, even under impression of the Romans, they understood we are free because we are the sons and daughters of Abraham. We are free. This is our land. This is this is God's land that he has given to us. And even if there are times when we are enslaved or impressed, we are free sons. We're not slaves. We are sons. And so this, this marking and circumcision mark them as free people. They're not slaves. They are free people. They are people of the promise. And even though they will not keep their side of the bargain, their covenant, God would keep his side of the bargain, his covenant. He made a promise, much like they looked to the rainbow to say, that is God promising us never to flood the world. He looks at the rainbow. We look at the rainbow and we are reminded of the promise. So circumcision was God saying, I will remember my promise to you. Fast forward to your baptism date and you were had a circumcision, not of the body, not of the flesh, but a circumcision of the heart. The sinful nature is cut away and there is something new about you. You are righteous in Christ. You are a new creation. More than that, you are marked. You are the spiritual ancestor of Abraham. You are not a servant or a slave. You are a son. Whether you're a daughter or a son, you are a son and an heir to the promised land of heaven. And so God looks at your baptism and says, I remember the promise I gave to you. And you are reminded of your baptism and therefore are reminded of the promise that God gave to you. You belong to the family. You are free you are marked as one belonging to Christ crucified. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.